Good morning. Uh, I don't know where to start this, you know. This chapter, man. What was this? Okay. One Piece 973. The Kozuki Clan. Ay, 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 ay. Oda, what have you done? Okay, first things first, cover story, useless, as always. Apparently, Goldie managed to do something. He blew up the... some crates, not the actual ship, some crates near the marine ship, very close to Shifan's cage, I might add. But... Uh, yeah, she's fine, I hope. Wouldn't it be funny if that wasn't actually Chiffon, but Lola? Because after this chapter, we might say that it's not entirely out of Oda's character to plane out Fula's with a name tag and a face. We know that by now. So imagine if in the cover story where Chiffon was getting a haircut, what if it wasn't Chiffon, but Lola? And then the main point of this cover story would be not to find Lola, but to find Chiffon. But no, I really, yeah, I, I thought this, but I really don't think that this is the case. But enough of the cover story, I lost enough time with the cover story. Let's go to the chapter, because this chapter, my goodness, this chapter, this chapter was great. Uh, this chapter was amazing, is amazing, and I gotta say it's one of the better cap, uh, one of the better chapters we've had in this flashback. I mean, it's not number one, honestly, it's not number one, but it just answers so many questions. Honestly, the pacing, the pacing of this chapter is amazing. All the informations we see, we jump from, from point A to B to C to D, all in quick succession, and the pacing is amazing. When I was reading it, I was like, okay, yes, what's going to go next? And then you get to the big reveal of the chapter, which... Let's be honest, it's not the biggest reveal this side of the river because many of us, myself not included because I still had doubts about it, I thought about it in, in, uh, in my one or trader theory, but I wasn't all on board with how it played out. Um, so most of us, a lot of us, really nailed down the Denjiro Kyoshiro thing and spoilers but if you're here I, ass I assume you already read the chapter so so yeah Denjiro is Kyoshiro or vice versa however you want to phrase it but anyway we go back to Roger to Roger's ship time and we see Odin showing Momonosuke and Hiyori how vast the world is the center of this little flashback within the flashback is now Momonosuke, not Odin. Even though Odin is the one making the exposition, uh, Hiyori and Momonosuke are actually the centers of these expositions. Momonosuke is being taught how to swing a sword, um, his father is asking him what type of woman he prefers, so we can see where that um, voluptuous Prefer preferation preference came from so uh, yes uh, so we see him his return to Wano again and him speaking with his retainers about Zo and their connection and he once again talks about if the time comes and and the scabbards are like, but what time, Lord Odin? And he's like, oh, you'll know it when it happens. Here. And then we see Hiyori playing the, the shamisen. And um, 
<laughs> and it's a very funny scene because Odin is just... He praises her, of course. He praises her for a good job. And then he goes like, oh, it's a good song. You'll you'll have to play it in my funeral. <laughs> and the poor thing just starts crying. <laughs> and, and then they're in the bad scene. And Odin is like, don't make your sister cry. And Momo is like... But, but Dad, you made her cry. And he was like, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. It's, it's Odin. He has no notion. We go back to the present past time where we see the retainers escaping from the Beast Pirates. And this is where the pacing starts to, to pick up. We see Kiko and Kinemon slicing through some dudes. Uh, Shinobu asking if she can be a vassal of um, of Odin's. I am not a hundred percent sure of what I'm gonna say, but I think that this could be a nod to the fact that she'll replace whoever whomever is the whoever is the traitor. Uh, this chapter cleared a lot of things. I'm not gonna say otherwise. It cleared a lot of suspicion. The last few trailers have been doing that. They have they have been clearing a lot of suspicion. Suspicion from Shinobu, suspicion from Denjiro in this chapter. Uh, as I said, Kinemon, Kiku, uh, Neku, Inu, uh, not sure, a doji for me, are out of the block. All that remains is really Raizo and Kanjiro. And... I honestly do not think I it's not think I honestly don't know how to pin this in any of them sure Kanjiro has a lot of things that go against him I had that comment a few videos back saying when on the, on the traitor video saying explaining in detail why Kanjiro could be the traitor but honestly I still, but yeah, if this ever comes to pass, if indeed one of the scabbards is the traitor, I'm sure Shinobu will take her place. Maybe that means that Raizo is the traitor after all, because uh, he's a he's a ninja, she's a she's a Kunoichi, so I don't know. Maybe. Uh, oh well. Uh, and yes, we get the confirmation. And this is big because we already started getting confirmation last chapter, but we get confirmation on something that was told way back in Zo. Zo is like how many years that was? Like two or three years now, Zo? I'm not sure, but and we see the reason of their fight and their eventual capture. So yes, and as we predicted last chapter. They started arguing because one thinks the other is responsible for Odin's death. In Orashi thinks that he that Nekomamushi was the one responsible because the, because of the fact that he taunted Kaido, and Nekomamushi thinks that in Orashi is the traitor because he was worried. He was more worried about how the enemy was going to react to the insults. <sighs> Honestly. In this case, I side with Inurashi. He was the most sensible one because you don't get out of the fire and into the frying pan and you just expect that your taunts will not have an effect. In this case, it didn't have because Orochi was not going to let Odin escape. But you understand what I mean? Because you don't get out of a sticky situation only to to a very precarious one, because they were not safe yet, only to taunt your enemies and expect that nothing comes out of it. I mean, so I'm sorry, Nekomamushi, I like you and all, but you know, Arashi is correct. I am a, I am a dog person after all, so <laughs> that explains it. So they are captured by one of the numbers. We still don't see how he is. We just see his silhouette as we did back. I don't even know. I would have to go and check an image. I haven't done that. I don't know if he's one of the ones we saw on that on that big panel. But yeah, they're captured. Denjiro screams out to them, but they just need to keep going. Um, 
Denjiro and Ashura stay behind to fight the enemy hordes. Another number appears. And then the main group goes to the castle. The main group being Kinemon, Kiku, uh, Raizo, Kanjiro and Momonosuke. Well, Momonosuke is already there, so no, not Momonosuke. So, yeah. And Kawamatsu, and Kawamatsu. It's Kawamatsu I was forgetting. Uh, we see the Beast Pirates in front of Kuri's castle. We see King. We see King, but no Queen. That's interesting. I was looking for him, and unless I'm really, really not seeing him, he's not here. So, we have King. Well, he's probably there. We just... We just didn't see him, but he's, he's there. Um, and this happens very fast, because in a moment, we see Toki embracing the kids. The next moment, bam, all the samurais are down. Toki's down, Hiyori's crying, and Kaido is just holding Momonosuke by the throat over the edge of Kuri Castle. When I saw this, I was like, Jesus... How did Kaido not squish him already? Momonosuke is eight, is eight years old. And Kaido is the behemoth of a man. Like, and he's just holding him in the edge of the castle like... I'm gonna drop you. You're gonna fall. And Momonosuke is like, I'm gonna fall, I'm gonna die. <coughs> another, another throwback. The famous sentence, Your father is a fool of a lord. We knew that Kaido had said this, but now we get the context and the scene where it actually happened. This is what I like about Oda. He starts things and he finishes things. For the most part, anyway. But so far we can't really complain all that much. Uh, Kaido intends to end the Kozuki line by killing Momonosuke. And god damn, those legs are thick! Look at those legs! You'd wonder, how did Kaido go from being like a member of the Long Leg tribe to having shabby, stalk-sized stalk legs? I saw a meme on uh, Arthur's Twitter of the Library of O'Hara, and I, and I thought, because I had noticed this on the first read, and I was like, oh, okay, someone enlarged the image and, and stretched his legs. But before starting the video, I went to check and no, his, his legs are really long. Look at that. Look at them legs, man. Jesus Christ. Kaido did not skip leg day until then. But well, in the present time, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he skipped quite a lot of leg day. Because so, so much so that his legs actually got shorter. Jesus Christ. Uh, Momonosuke taunts him. A declaration of of possible war, but it all amounts to nothing because the poor kid is eight years old. We can't expect him to do that much yet. There's been some crazy theories saying that whosoever has the Toki Toki no Mi, <coughs> Iori, uh, will be able to sort of age Momonosuke. I also saw another version with um, with uh, Bonnie's fruit, but Bonnie's too far away. And besides, I don't think Bonnie would be able to quite exact pinpoint quite exactly the age she wanted someone to to be, because we know that so far we know that she can go from normal to baby and or elder so nah, we still don't know too much about her fruit if it, if it is to happen if Momonosuke is to suddenly grow up kind of like Lambo from Katekyo Hitman Reborn that was the reference I saw used on that theory was that he would be able to go to become his 20 years in the future self and then with the power he has maybe Maybe he'd be able to defeat at least Orochi. I don't want Momonosuke to defeat Kaido, rest assured. Um, so yeah, Kaido tosses him aside and goes, goes away and leaves the castle to burn. Of course he had to do it because we know that they survive. 
But this was a pretty massive oversight on his part. Like, it, it's one of those typical villain oversights that you think, well, if they had done it like this, it would never happen. And so, yeah, if I was Kaido, I would not leave it to chance. I would just have blown the castle with a borrow bread and be done with it. Like, leave nothing to, chain, to chance. But hey, Kin and the others arrive and we see Toki telling them, I have something to tell you, and boom. Kinemon exclaims to the future and bam, we don't see nothing else. We see Kawamatsu jumping with Hiyori and bam, bam, bam. We see Toki getting out of the castle to deliver her message. And yes, it's... the. The Curie Castle is empty. It's empty now. And it's burning down. We see him empty. Toki's not there. The, the group that entered the future is already to the future. And Kamas already escaped with Hiyori. A slight flashback of Odin telling, telling Toki that if she only wanted to see the future she she's, she's searching for, sorry, to see the future, she's... Blah, 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 fanatics today are getting the hang of me. The future she's looking for, there, there we go. Uh, quite a, bit, a good save there. She can only just jump ahead 20 years without him and see. And it's very cute. They, their relation is very cute because she was like, no, 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 no dinner for you. No dinner for you. So... <coughs> Because she doesn't want to go to the future without him. She found her quote-unquote destiny. She fell in love with Odin. And she doesn't want anything else. She doesn't want to go to the future. And this is very cute because... Much like her husband... After... After making a powerful stand... After the prophecy... She is shocked. We see members of the Beast Pirates among... Not quite among the public, but near the place where she is. And we see one of them cocking a gun. And... Yes, Lady Toki was shot. We are unsure if she's dead, though. I must remind you, we only see her cough blood. But... She was already slightly hurt from the encounter with Kaido, so... I don't want to be, you know, conspiracy theorist or anything, but, uh, you know... I already have an empty wall bus bus beneath, um, behind me, all I need is to start filling with, with, with threads and paper. But... Ugh, I don't know, maybe there's a case to be made of how she could still be alive. Who knows? Maybe she did jump in 20 years into the future. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe she's the one who's gonna turn her son into a, into his 20 year old self. Who knows? Who knows? Um, I assume a few days have passed, if not more than a few days. We don't get an exact time measure, but we go to the flower capital is one of the many first one of the first of many quick event scenes we see odin uh, odin oh my god we see Hirochi trying to to resist um hotter temperatures in his bath because now he feels that he needs to be up to odin's standards and we see the beginning of his lunacy with the scabbards because he, he, he needs proof, he craves proof that the Kozuki samurai are dead. And he ain't gonna get it. He ain't gonna get it. So, yeah, we see uh, Hatayama Mountain with Ashura Doji wondering if the group that Lady Toki sent to the future is alive. We see a brief scene of Kawamatsu with Hiyori again. 
and then Jesus Christ. This I did not realize this on the first read because I read it a little bit fast, but after rereading it like two or three times, this scene impacted me a lot, a lot more. Like the first scene, the first little rectangle. We see like birds flying, we see sound waves emitting, we see the scream. Then we close in on the on the cabin. And the cabin is I don't know, this is probably not the layout. In 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 the anime I think we will not see the cabin contorting like this because that would be actually rather comedic and not and not committing the what I think we'll get in the anime is like the screen shaking. So, and with a sort of aura, almost like Conqueror's Haki, Haki aura. And then we see the Njiro, with his face contorting. Like, a a at first I didn't realize how he went from the Njiro to Kyoshiro. But now I do, and he explains it. He says it, this face distorted by anger. He was so furious, so mad, so, so filled with grief and sadness that his face changed. His face changed. He went, his expression was a little bit more round. His nose was not as perky. His chin was not as... And you just see the comparison when he gets out of the cabin. It's it's sad. It's so sad because we all we always knew the little we knew of Denjiro when we first met him. He was like this jovial young guy. And when he followed Odin he was like he was very dedicated but always Always happy to help and very dedicated. He was one of the most loyal. I'm not questioning any loyalties here. But we gotta say that Kinemon and Denjiro, they are the MVPs of the Scabbards. Kinemon might be their leader, but Denjiro is right there after him. Because they were the first two. All the others, again, not questioning their loyalties. But the Jiro and Kinemon, that's where it's at. That's where the core of the Scabbards is at. And I think, and this is gonna sound very, very cheesy now that we have the confirmation that indeed the Jiro is Kyoshiro, I think it's very appropriate that the Jiro is Kyoshiro. Because we have an outside party of the Scabbards. He is part of the Scabbards, but he's not with the Scabbards. We have an outside party that might help explain why they arrived at the harbor and no one was there. We don't know how that's going to get solved. We don't know if this is the end of the flashback. A lot of people thought that last chapter was the end of the flashback. I myself wasn't believing that all that much. I really wanted to see a little bit more and we got to see a little bit more. So, but Jesus Christ. It's no wonder Over the Top always showed Kyoshiro near the scabbards. I think he appears like in the last panel or something uh, along Kawamatsu and the Shura Doji. So, well, for an anime who spoiled a crewmate in the third opening... <laughs> I, I'm not surprised. I mean, it was... It was there in front of our faces all the time. So, yeah. Kyoshiro goes to the... Well, Kyoshiro, the Jiro, I don't know. I'm gonna go with Kyoshiro now, because... Um, Kyoshiro goes to the flower capital and he starts amassing followers. He starts going by the name of Kyoshiro the Mad. And a few years, months, weeks, we, we don't know, but Hiroshi's 
looking more a little bit more like he is now. It is two twinkle side mustache. And we don't know. A few years have passed, I assume. Kyoshiro is now in his I wanna say the attire we knew him with. And he's bowing to Orosh and you can see you can see him shivering and and the vein of rage is controlling himself so much. Ugh, the poor guy, man. Like, let, let, let's ponder this for a second before moving on. I, I probably blew the time already. But um, imagine this is the situation of the scavers. We got four of them plus Momonosuke that were sent to the future. They, was, they were spared of the whole 20 years of suffering. We have Ashura Doji, who remained uh, those 20 years as a bandit leader and going up against the beast pirates in the meantime. We had Kawamatsu, who for like seven years... I think it was seven years. Dedicated seven years to protect Hiyori. Heather run from him. Was arrested and remained in Nudon prison for 13 years. Being tortured and eating a poison fish each day. Then we had Inurashi Nekomamushi who managed to escape and went back to Zo and spent the next 20 years feuding with one another, blaming one another for their master's death. And then we have Kyosh, we have the Njiro. One, as I said, one of the most loyal guys to Odin. He was overcame with grief, despair, and, and just rage. He forced himself to work for the guy responsible for his master's dead. And he still had to bow down to bow down to him. Honestly, right now, my money is on Kyoshiro versus Hiroshi. I think we need this. He needs this. Like, Denjiro needs to deal with anyone. And I really hope it, it can be Orochi. If we have to make bets on who's gonna face Orochi, not that Orochi gives is going to give that much trouble. I don't think Orochi is even capable of handling himself in a fight. Like, the guy's a bloody coward, for Christ's sake. I don't think he can handle himself in battle. But yeah, I would really like Denjiro to just... You're a nuisance. Like, slice him in half. For me... That could be the end of Orochi. I couldn't care less about Orochi. Then Jiro can just cut him in half and I'd be happy with it. But hey. And yes, again, moving forward, we have the confirmation that Denjiro slash Kishiro is indeed the Yushimi Tsukozo. The rush the rushing hour boy, the one who has been stealing gold from the capital and giving it to the poor. That's what gave him his nickname of Napping Kyoshiro, because he's always tired, because he spends the night stealing money, a la Robin Hood style. Then we see again poor Kawamatsu crying for, for Hiyori, and we see how the poor thing ended up in Kyoshiro's care. Now, all those people who thought, all of us really, who thought when we first met them, that Kyoshiro and Komurasaki were, you know what? Well, shame on us, because she's his master. And she's quite younger than him. So, 
yeah. Now, I'm not blaming us or anything. I'm not saying we're all perversion old coots. It was what it was what transpired when we met them, when we saw that bingo flashback, bingo flashback. Ne never, never a character I thought would be worthy of a flashback, but here we go. Uh, when we saw that bingo flashback, when he went to pick her up, we actually saw that recently in the anime. When he went to pick Komurasaki up, and we see Kyoshiro getting out of the room, we all thought that he and her were a thing. We couldn't be more wrong. And yes, we see her grow from little little girl to adolescent playing the Shimisen and later to Komurasaki. And that is how the chapter ends. And then Jiro makes her promise that she won't reveal his identity to anyone and that he will protect her in Kawamatsu's stead and does name her Komurasaki. Sorry, I'm a bit sleepy still. <sighs> I don't even know, man. I don't even know. Oh, God. This chapter, man. This chapter. Ah, this chapter. I love chapters like this. This chapter answered a lot of things. So, let's 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 go over all of them. We had a confirmation that Denjiro is Kyoshiro is Denjiro. Um, Komurasaki is indeed Hiyori. There was that. There were still theories linking Komurasaki with Toki and la da da, but no. Komurasaki was indeed Hiyori. Uh, we saw the reason of Inurashi and Ekumamushi's feud. Um, we saw the scene of Kaido telling Momonosuke, your father is a fool of a lord. We got confirmation of who's the Yoshimitsu Kozo. A lot of things, man. This chapter. And, and it just... That's why I love Oda, because whenever we get... Whenever we get the chance to read this flashback in, 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 the, in the volume, in the, the, the Tokuban, I think that's how it's called, in the volume, and having read the previous Wano chapters all in sequence, it, it's just so organic. It's just... Yeah. Now we look back at the scene where Denjiro slash Kishiro Killed Komurasaki killed and a lot of us later thought that oh no but since Toki is Komurasaki and our and our Toki is also still alive they could have changed <coughs> sorry they could have changed places and Kyoshiro killed Toki or Kyoshiro killed Hiyori and Toki is Hiyori and the, the <laughs> all our collective brains just farted that moment. But no, no. I still think that if Toki's not dead, she's not Hiyori. I I know that we still have that scar thing to consider, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. I can't see a reason for either Toki or Hiyori to sacrifice themselves and one stay in the stead of the other. Like, how, why would Toki, if she was alive, let's imagine that Toki, Toki was indeed alive and there were two Komurasakis walking about. And in that moment where Kyoshiro slashed one of them, that one was Hiyori. And that the Hiyori we now know is Toki. First of all, that would make no sense. How would Kyoshiru so easily slash Hiyori if not to save her from further harm? We know now that she's alive, so he was able to slash her 
quote unquote, to to save her. She was dead, and there was no need for further injuries. So, and we don't even know if she, if how injured she was after that. On the other side, why would Toki even agree to let her her daughter sacrifice herself in her stead? Toki would jump at the opportunity of sacrificing herself for her child. That's what she did with the prophecy thing. So, yes, I th now I think that that scar thing on Earth High was just for shows. It's weird. It was a weird panel. But hey, it is One Piece. It can't get much weirder than that. We are used to it by now, so this is how the this is one piece, and we love it for it. So, my dear friends, my dear viewers, I think this concludes this week's review of the chapter chapter nine hundred and seventy three that goes Zuki family. I love this chapter. I want more. I want more of it. I want more of this. I cannot wait for this flashback to be adapted. And honestly, if if they can do it properly, this will be ah oh, oh so oh so beautiful, oh so bright. This has the potential to be the best flashback in all of One Piece. Like for many reason. Like this flashback that started all the way back when, I don't even remember now. But this chapter has the potential to be one of the best chapters ever of One Piece. So far. So far. Right? It's, it's pretty high up. It's pretty high up, I tell you. So, that was it. My dear friends, my dear viewers, I hope you have enjoyed it. Please, if you have, do leave your opinions in the comment section down below. What you thought of this reveal? What are you expecting? It were you not, were you disappointed, were you not? I myself was ecstatic when I saw the chapter. When I read the first translations that arrived, yes, I still read the fan translations because, let's face it, the chapter releases on Sunday, the fan translations release on Friday. Two days is a lot for a One Piece fan like myself and like a lot of us to, to wait. And, to be honest, doing review over the official release is already good enough. So, and of course I wouldn't do it on the fan translations because they have no, they have not the same quality as they had before. So, yeah. But, enough of that. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please, if you have, leave your opinions in the comment section down below. I really, really like to read to your comments, the few that there are, of course, but I always enjoy them, no matter what. So, I see you guys next week for the next chapter 974. We'll see if the flashback continues or not. So, see you then. Bye-bye.